Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is Friday, July 20th, 2012. Here's a quick look at what's coming up. Tonight, Rob Dew speaks with the woman that was in an Old West showdown over smart meters encroachment on her property. Then, tragedy at the midnight premiere of The Dark Knight Rises, breaking info as the PSYOP unfolds. Plus, the ATF director offers veiled threats to whistleblowers. All that and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. All that and more coming up during the next hour, but first let's jump right into our top headlines as we begin this evening with the tragic Batman shooting in Aurora, Colorado, where political opportunists have already seized upon the incident to push for gun control. New York Mayor Bloomberg, predictably one of the first public figures, to demand a crackdown on gun rights, as he has asked both Mitt Romney and Barry Sitar, I mean uh, Barack Obama, to stand up and tell us what they're going to do about mass shootings. Now, more on Bloomberg later. But first, earlier today on the Alex Jones Show, Alex broke down how this incident and this shooting, it's, you know, it looks like a false flag attack. And, you know, there's no doubt that this has PSYOP written all over it. Here's Alex Jones. It is Friday, the 20th day of July, 2012. And if you look at the full spectrum of information unfolding right now, 100% chance that the mass murder committed in the suburb of Denver, Colorado, right next to Littleton and Columbine, was a false flag mind control event. Of course, my quotes are on record uh, from back in uh, earlier in this month when I put a review out, what, three weeks ago or so, of The Dark Knight. And in that, I basically break down the fact that it is a weaponized propaganda psychological warfare system with subliminals commanding people to be in fear of terrorism, but also generating feelings of terror as a Hegelian dialectic event. Now, that nine-minute analysis is up at InfoWars.com right now. Now, yesterday, the uh, makers of the film ordered the video taken down, even though we used the trailer, small clips, it's all fair use. We're analyzing it. They ordered it taken down. Now, normally, the computers would do that instantly when a video came up. If it really had copyrighted material, it's already set in the YouTube uh, systems to recognize it and automatically your video never goes live because it says copyright claim. We counterfiled and the, uh, and the block was taken off, so the video is available right now. Paul Watson wrote an article that was up at 6 a.m. Eastern this morning that was the first article to predict that Bloomberg, Chucky e. Schumer, uh, Nancy Pelosi, and the, and the usual suspects would come out and call for restricting the Second Amendment further, as they've done in Chicago and New York with total bans, thus creating hellish crime waves that dwarf what happened uh, even on a weekly basis uh, in Denver. There are more deaths in Chicago every week than what just died uh, in the suburb of Denver. And sure enough, those reports have all now come out as the establishment calls for it. ABC News, The New York Times, Bloomberg himself, Bloomberg Publication, all the usual suspects, people that want to run your life, people that want to make you defenseless so that somebody dressed up, by the way, in a Bane outfit, that's what he was wearing, a gas mask, came in there and, and, and of course, with so many of these shootings, they're wearing masks. And then they find the drug-addled suspect later, just like Sirhan Sirhan. That's even mainstream news at the RFK shooter. The police's own report said he didn't shoot him, wasn't the same caliber. They held his hand down, and it was his, quote, security detail behind him that shot Robert F. Kennedy in the back. 
and that's London Telegraph, Associated Press, Reuters, LA Times. That's now admitted. Sirhan Sirhan's lawyers are trying to get him out of prison for that defense. So, so this stuff goes on. They've got drugs they can give you, which make you close to 100% suggestible. In fact, you've seen this in the news where they've got flowers down in South America that you can give somebody and tell them, you know, put your hand in the meat grinder, uh, and drown your baby. In fact, I've got to get with my writers and have them explain that, that, that they've got drugs that make you, they say, 100% suggestible. I mean, not everybody's susceptible to this stuff. Uh, some people have different effects with different drugs. But the point is, it's close to 100%. The military, it's declassified, uses this and then programs. Or they just drug somebody and then tell them they did the shooting and have them all set up. Columbine, we know, was a false flag. I'd say 100% false flag, and I'll explain why on the other side. You see, even if this was just an organic shooter, they were mass programmed by the culture that, that, that sells all this. I don't just get on air and say something's a false flag, a self-inflicted wound, a staged event. Because not all events are staged. But when you have the UN treaty set to be signed in the next week or two, Obama's not been clear, he said late July, early August, and they're talking about even if Congress doesn't ratify it, they're going to try to implement it somehow. It's just the right thing to do. Even though Congress won't do it, I'm going to implement it. Kind of like he's done with carbon taxes. They're only a couple votes shy in the Senate of being able to ratify the UN small arms ban treaty that even Forbes admits registers all your guns and then allows for confiscation. I had Bob Dacey in yesterday reading from the UN and from the treaty writers of how they would implement and what it meant. And saying in those documents, that video's up at Infowars.com, the history of UN gun control, gun restrictions is the name of the video, that they say at the end, we're going to use this as an arms treaty, so it's legally binding, to go after individual firearms. So you've got that coming up in the next two weeks. Just like they were trying to pass more gun bans in 99, and then magically Columbine happens in April, one week before the votes. We're talking miles from where this happened. Uh, you've got all the other issues. The guy's always wearing a mask. Whether it's these staged events the Russian government's been caught doing to bring in police state shootings. You have somebody drugged up. Your people do the shooting. Then they disappear. Then they grab the patsy. The patsy's drugged out of their mind. Or sometimes, just like the underwear bomber was gotten on the plane by the State Department, that's, that's C-SPAN. That's, that's the Undersecretary of State admitting an unnamed agency told us give him... Uh, a visa, even though he didn't have a passport, get him on the plane. We had a witness day one, Kurt Askell, the lawyer, who saw this happen. And then a month after he told us here on the air and broke that, it got confirmed. Underwear bomber, gotten on the plane by British intelligence. Head of the 7-7 bombing, a SWAT. On record, MI6, London Telegraph, Fox News. And we're on the Lockheed, number three in Al-Qaeda, hanging out secretly at the Pentagon, Fox News, AP, Reuters. My point is, is that I, I worked with Watson right before we went live on air. We're doing another article right now, breaking down the 10 points that directly link this to false flag. Because there's at least 10 of them. And this is where the shadow government is based, is in and around Denver. They control the police there. Harris and Kleibold of Columbine reportedly got 127 bombs. That's CBS News. Look it up. Into the building that day, the school was half empty. The police stood down. The police didn't respond for hours. People reported up to four different shooters. They wouldn't release the tape for over a year and only release selected clips. And there they were wearing masks. They'd, they'd shot a video of attacking the school months before that was school-sponsored. Their parents were both in high-level black ops. They were both on serotonin reuptake inhibitors. It all had the same MO of a black op, of a staged event. Now remember, Sirhan Sirhan, the LAPD and the coroner said didn't shoot RFK, and it did come out who shot him with his security detail, who was known CIA, who'd been assigned to the detail that day, behind him with a different caliber. The audio acoustics, all of it, the witnesses. Sirhan Sirhan was given an amnesic 
They give you an amnesic, just like Baroness Mander Vanderlube, who supposedly firebombed the Reichstag February 27th, 1933, to bring in martial law in Germany. He was found naked and drugged and didn't know if he'd set fire to the building. Like he was going to run around the Capitol building and set more than 14 fires in it. And Hermann Goering, though, don't worry, caught him and stopped him. The big hero who it later came out and declassified documents was the one behind it. They just finally released uh, the uh, investigations that happened during Nuremberg. Those have been classified, but a lot of authors and researchers already knew. A few years ago, they released those. The point is, Hitler started World War II with Poland. Mainline textbooks just say, oh, he just attacked Poland. No, actually, he attacked military bases along the border. His own military bases dressed up prisoners as Polish troops and as German troops, shot them up, and then shot newsreel footage and said Poland had attacked Germany with their World War I, pre-World War I military. It was horse-drawn carriages and guys with swords. Yeah, right. Most powerful military in the world at that time was German military built in secret, pretty much. Secret rearmament rolled out, taking Danzig and other areas that had been taken by France at the end of World War I, and then they go into Poland and split it up with Uncle Joe Stalin. All done by a fake news story and shooting a few real people and then saying that they had attacked. Okay, that's how this is done. But so you can have a good patsy, like what you had with uh, Giffords and Judge Roll, who were investigating, we've now confirmed, Fast and Furious, they were going to come out bipartisan together. They've got to be dealt with. Out comes a guy who was admittedly taking hallucinogens every day for years, hanging out with weird people, and had disappeared and told people he was under mind control. He shows up and shoots two people. They try to link it to the Tea Party. Then it turns out he was a uh, out-of-his-mind person uh, who was a Democrat. But that's, again, ladies and gentlemen... We're now being told by ABC and, and others, oh, he could be a Democrat or no, he's Tea Party. And within hours, we predicted this. Paul Watson wrote an article this morning that's linked up on the right-hand side of DrudgeReport.com right now. Dark night shooting to be exploited for political grist. And then over the next few hours, AP, Reuters, CNN, Bloomberg, all of them coming out saying... Obama and Romney both need to call to restrict guns. And by the way, Romney has supported that in the past. Now he says he doesn't, but, but now they're saying maybe this will give him the political courage to restrict people's Second Amendment. There's our article to be exploited for political grist under it. ABC News, right underneath that, already linking Tea Party. But backtracks now. Turns out he's a Democrat. Breitbart, shooter may ha be registered Democrat. CNN, Pierce Morgan calls for gun control. Bloomberg, what are Obama, Romney going to do about guns? Not about a totally sick society that we see. And by the way, the London Telegraph got it right. They had a 12-month-old baby in there. They had little kids in there, six-year-olds in there, four-year-olds in there. A 12-year-old got shot and killed. He, the, the, the shooter reportedly shot a baby at point-blank range. All of this right before the treaty that's stalling in the Senate. Obama's about to sign it, and now he gets to be the hero. And by the way, don't worry. Don't worry. I have a guy like dressed up like Bain shows up and does all this. Shooting imitates scene from 1986 Batman comic book where a guy in a mask like Bane shows up and shoots a bunch of people at a movie theater, and then they blame Batman. Oh, and see, the movie's now being blamed. Obama leads prayer moment of silence. Supporters chant four more years. Yes, this is the false flag rollout. And if you don't believe it, I got a bridge I'm ready to sell you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a nine and a half minute video up at Infowars.com where I predicted Obama would do something like this. It's incredible. Now we're going to flash back to a video that Alex Jones put together just a couple of weeks ago where he has analysis and predictions of the new Batman movie. The video you're about to watch was 
actually recently censored by YouTube. It was blocked inside the United States on copyright claims filed by Warner Brothers, despite its having, you know, we only use short promotional clips, and it was clearly fell in within the fair use guidelines and First Amendment free speech rights. But let's try it again. This is called Leaked. The Dark Knight Rises on the InfoWars Nightly News. One of the most anticipated movies in a long time is about to come out. The Dark Knight Rises. Get ready because we are going to leak, spoil, and decode the new Batman film that's coming out. We're going to get into the meaning behind the meaning, the secrets behind the secrets. But first understand, this is one of the most successful propaganda franchises out there selling tyranny. For all of you that say it's just a movie. For more than 50 years, the Department of Defense has paid and financed for most major action films. They all have a unified propaganda message, selling you on the idea that you're powerless and that you can't protect yourself. Only shadowy groups, by violating your rights and liberties, can keep you safe. Throughout the Batman franchise, any vigilantes other than Batman are powerless, pathetic, fat, stupid, or psychopathic. To understand the conclusion of the Dark Knight series, we first have to go back to the beginning. In Batman Begins, a secret society known as the League of Shadows, led by Ra's al Ghul, played by Liam Neeson, seeks to put a poisonous psychotropic drug in the water supply to drive Gotham, the archetypal New York, into total insanity. Then he will bring order out of the chaos. And as all informed people know, governments have been fluoridating water supplies for more than 60 years, causing brain damage and cancer. So we see here in the first installment a revelation of the method or the power structure showing you how they operate that there are secret societies that manipulate for good and bad. Bruce Wayne, the aristocrat, the banker, the globalist, has his secretive system. And then there's the evil uh, outlanders trying to come in and take over. In part two, Batman, the Dark Knight, we're introduced to the Joker. Now let's analyze the underlying messages here. He is a nonconformist, a libertarian type who makes his own clothes and burns money. Nothing. No matches on prints, DNA, dental, clothing is custom, no labels. He doesn't go along with the mainline consumerist corporate culture. And so he's got to be a murdering psychopath who enjoys blowing up hospitals, bridges, ships, and killing police officers. But our hero, the rich banker industrialist Bruce Wayne, have developed a system to hack into cell phones and use them to create a sonar system that can give them a three-dimensional view of what's happening by using Defense Department technology they were developing to hack into all the cell phones and use them as audio microphone systems. They're able to save the city because they violate everyone's rights and spy on them without warrants. So again, it aids and abets and gives comfort to criminal elements in the NSA who on record are spying on the American people and using all of our appliances from smart meters to computers to smartphones to spy on us. All of it is pro-tyranny propaganda. We now move from part two to part three, the Dark Knight Rises. So let's start decoding the Dark Knight Rises. Number one, look at the name, the Dark Knight Rises. And we're told that he's willing to give it all up. You've given them everything. Not everything. Not yet. Oh, you've already given these people so much. I haven't given everything. So he's this Christ figure 
this dark Christ who is fighting the evil secret society led by Bane, who is coming to destroy Babylon, the beautiful city. Here's a few juicy spoilers. Batman gets his back broken in a fight with Bane. At the end, as Bane is dying, we learn that he's a Darth Vader character who can't survive without the mask, which is the recurring cyborg archetype that humanity can't live without machines. Who is Bane? He's a symbolic demon, a destroyer, a symbol of the Hegelian dialectic, order out of chaos. To the conscious mind, these symbols don't register. But to the subconscious, they are clear commands, just like you're a computer. The power of Hollywood, the power of images to program the mind is not debated. And the Pentagon and Madison Avenue know that. Remember back in 1975, when for more than two years, the beaches were almost empty in the United States and areas of Europe and Australia because people were so scared that a giant shark was going to eat them? Psychological warfare chiefs certainly paid attention to that. Even though on average, less than five people die a year from great white shark attacks worldwide, people would not go in the water and were demanding shark patrols and more lifeguards for a non-existent threat. And that's what these movies do, not just these Batman films. Every one of these films has terrorists blowing up major cities constantly to create the psychological illusion that there's big sharks out there that want to eat you, and there's terrorists under every table that want to attack you and your family. And you notice at the end of Jaws, the shark has been killed. He's been defeated, but still the beaches remained empty. You are being subconsciously programmed. When you go in one of these movies and just turn yourself over to it and suspend a disbelief, you become a willing victim to have your mind literally programmed in that key fear state. Because when the mind is in that fear state, it is wide open to be reprogrammed. And now in the new film, we see the football game blown up. We see the police helpless if the state doesn't take every right we've got and turn our children against us and set up highway checkpoints and launch 30,000 armed drones and listen to our phone calls, then none of us are safe because the non-existent threat of Osama bin Laden and al Qaeda and Bain are gonna get us. The key to understanding why the social engineers want males in an arrested development junior high mentality state is simple. Through thousands of films and video games, we are bombarded with the idea that threats always come in the form of a giant evil monster or terrorist who openly announces themselves, not through slow cultural death. And men are presented with an idea of Arnold Schwarzenegger, the Herculean figure, uh, or somebody like Batman, defeating the enemy all by themselves because the public is powerless. That's why now when I talk to so many men, they say, oh, you're such a hero. You go out and confront politicians. You go out and you know fight for freedom. I'm glad you're there. What do you mean? I'm just an average person like you. We're not fighting big green Martians from Mars. We're not fighting uh, you know, shadowy groups like Bain, unless you talk about the private Federal Reserve that's hijacked this country. We're fighting the new world order. We're fighting a corporate takeover system with regulations and, and red tape that doesn't announce itself as an enemy, but that just oozes in with bureaucracy to dominate and usurp our lives. We're fighting the UN and Agenda 21 and a federal government bought and paid for by foreign interest engaging in treason. When you're conscious or awake, aware, watching, when you don't suspend your disbelief, you see the programming, the manipulation, the hypnotic suggestions right there like it's written on the wall. But when you're unconscious, like a general population, you are wide open to be victimized by this programming. Hey, I like a good action adventure and movie as much as the next person. There's nothing wrong with enjoying a film if you're aware of the implanted images. But it's important that people become conscious of the manipulation that's going on. So please share this presentation with your friends and family and visit infowars.com forward slash 
Batman, where we've posted some other examples of brainwashing that are taking place in our culture. Now, Alex Jones will be posting updates on this story all weekend long as the story develops. So be sure to check out Infowars.com for updates as they happen. Now, meanwhile, earlier we were talking about Mayor Bloomberg. And within hours of the shooting, the New York mayor rushed to exploit the tragedy and try to crush our right to self-defense. With more on this story, we now take you to Infowars Nightly News reporter David Ortiz. Thank you, Darren. I'm David Ortiz. In the hours, days, and weeks ahead, we can expect a concerted attack on the right to own firearms and the Second Amendment in response to the shooting in Colorado last night. Proponents of disarming the public will argue that restricting the right to own firearms will prevent mass murders and violence. But here's something they will not tell you. The chance you will be a victim of a mass shooting is at best minuscule. According to the Bureau of Justice Statistics, the proportion of homicides incidents involving two victims has increased slightly from 2.7% in 1980 to 3.7% in 2008. So basically within about a 30 year window, um, that number has barely increased. Here are some more numbers. According to the Bureau of Justice Statistics, 3.7% of all homicides involved two victims, 0.5% involved three victims, 0.2% involved four victims, and 0.1% uh, involved five or more victims. So obviously uh, mass uh, murders um, are, are, are rarely happening, yet they continue to want to uh, gun grab the government. Moreover, the homicide rate in the United States has declined sharply in recent years from 9.3 homicides per 100,000 in 1992 to 4.8 homicides per, per 100,000 in 2010. So this is obviously uh, far from an epidemic, yet the government wants control of your guns. And here's one of the reasons why. I'm going to give you some quick stories. Um, a 71-year-old uh, recently was at a uh, gaming cafe in Florida. Uh, two intruders came in, one with a bat, one with a gun. They wanted to rob the place. He shot a gun, and um, the perpetrators ran away. And as a result, uh, one bystander said, says, I think he is wonderful for doing what he did, for protecting us. And that could actually be seen on YouTube, from what I'm told. Another uh, example of uh, law-abiding citizens protecting themselves with a gun. In Phoenix, recently, a 14-year-old boy protected his three younger brothers from an intruder who broke into their home with a gun. He shot at the intruder with his father's gun, and uh, he struck the intruder, and the intruder ran away. That recently happened in Phoenix. And just another story that recently happened in Oklahoma City, a woman uh, was able to protect both herself and her child. Uh, an intruder came in, tried to kick in her door. He came at her with a knife, and her name, Mrs. McKinley, she took out her 12-gauge, and she uh, shot the perpetrator and was able to save the life of both her child and herself. But uh, the government would say that's evil. It's, you know, she was wrong, obviously. So um, those are just some great examples, and you don't see that in the media. Examples of people protecting their loved ones because they used a firearm. Uh, let me end with this. It's a quote from Ben Franklin. And it said, those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. And later on in the show, Rob is going to interview a woman who exercised uh, her Second Amendment rights. Uh, that's going to be a great piece. So uh, back to you, Darren. Thank you, Dave, for that report. And what an amazing coincidence that this Dark Knight massacre just happens to occur within weeks away from, and only a few more votes needed in the Senate to pass the UN Small Arms Treaty. After all, our government is filled with lawmakers who endorse a one world government with the UN as the single governing agency for the globe. So when this treaty comes before the US Senate, you know, they're most likely gonna support it, especially now following the 
shooting in Colorado. And the UN has been planning this for a very long time. I mean, uh, just look at the statue that's in front of the UN building in New York. That's a 357 revolver right there. There you go. That's a 357 revolver with a barrel tied in a knot. It's not a broken missile. It's not a broken bomb. That is blatant, in-your-face, small arms control. And speaking of a one-world government, the United States government has a shadow government that spies on the American people. It launches false flag terror attacks against its own citizens. It starts illegal and unjust wars for, well, for resources and imperial control. And they're hell-bent on destroying what's left of our constitutional republic in order to establish a one-world government in its ruins. Those of you watching the show for the first time, you've probably figured out by now that you're not watching the mainstream news media because the truth will not be televised, at least not by any of the major television networks who are owned and controlled by the mega corporations and the military industrial complex. You will, however, routinely get a steady dose of the truth right here on the InfoWars Nightly News. And, uh, well, that, my friends, makes us dangerous in the eyes of the establishment media. Recently, the Soros-funded Obama front group, Think Progress, wrote a hit piece about Matt Drudge's popular website, The Drudge Report, drudgereport.com, saying it was responsible for causing an overload of conspiracy theories by routinely linking to yours truly, Infowars.com. A Think Progress study of the Drudge Report reveals the popular website is responsible for causing an overload of conspiracy theories by linking to Infowars.com, which, by the way, our website dwarfs ThinkProgress.org in terms of traffic and readership. In fact, American confidence in the dinosaur media has dropped to an all-time low. Meanwhile, independent media is surging. And here's John Bowne with statistics to back that up. The Independent is reporting that CNN lost 50% of its audience over the last 12 months. Fox News and MSNBC now overwhelm CNN in almost every time slot. Fox News is losing 10% annually and MSNBC is nosediving by 20%. In the incredibly important 25 to 54 year old demographic, CNN's Piers Morgan averages 39,000 viewers, while Aaron Burnett brings in just 46,000 viewers. Anderson Cooper lost a quarter of his viewers, as half of Wolf Blitzer's viewers have looked elsewhere. Isn't it interesting that an alternative media source like Infowars.com, by simply offering the truth, has four times the presence? than a failing corporate lie factory such as msnbc.com, according to alexa.com. In the words of Frederick Douglass, at a time like this, scorching irony, not convincing argument, is needed. John Bound, InfoWars Nightly News. Now, earlier this month, acting ATF Director Todd Jones, we sent a memo to ATF employees warning potential whistleblowers that they will face consequences if they don't respect the chain of command and ask permission to release information damaging to the agency. If you don't find the way to raise your concerns to your leadership, there will be consequences, Todd Jones says in the video, because we cannot tolerate an undisciplined organization. One of the undisciplined ATF employees Managed to make a copy of the video. It's now being circulated, thankfully, on the Internet. And, uh, you know, I, I thought it looked like something straight out of 1984. Todd Jones looking very Big Brother-like in this clip. And, uh, well, especially when you present it like this. Choices and consequences. And when I'm talking about choices and consequences... I'm talking about the disciplinary process. What my expectation is, as the acting director, when it comes to the disciplinary process, choices and consequences simply means that as an employee of ATF, 
Should you decide not to abide by the standards of conduct or the rules of the road, should you decide that you're not going to play by the rules, there will be consequences. Choices and consequences mean simply that if you make more choices, that if you don't abide by the rules, that if you don't respect the chain of command, if you don't find the appropriate way to raise your concerns to your leadership, there will be consequences because we cannot tolerate, we cannot tolerate an undisciplined organization. And the next time that we talk, we'll start to grind down on some of the specifics about how we're going to actually follow through on this accelerated change that we've been implementing here at ATF over the last nine months. Thank you for your attention. Keep your comments coming in, and we'll talk to you again real soon. So there you have it. Whistleblowers will face consequences. And you know, Senator Charles Grassley from Iowa and Representative Daryl Issa from California, they actually sent a letter this week to Todd Jones declaring the message, and I'm going to quote here, it could be interpreted as a threat. Yeah, you think? ATF spokeswoman Ginger Colburn said the video was directed at employees who violate the rules and it was not directed at those with protected disclosure. Yeah. Hey, do me a favor, play the video again, uh, this time without sound. I'm going to try to translate what I think Todd Jones is, is really trying to say here. Hello. We will not tolerate anyone telling the truth to the public. Truth tellers will not be tolerated. If you disclose our illegal activities, we are going to F you up. You and your family will suffer. Now go back to sleep. Everything is fine. Big Brother loves you. And by the way, I'm naked from the waist down. Oh, okay, <laughs> you can stop there. All right, All right. stop, stop. You know, it's no secret that ATF whistleblowers were instrumental in exposing the illegal Operation Fast and Furious. So uh, I think Todd Jones is really saying, shh. That's what it looks like to me, so. Hey, we got more news from the TSA, and this time InfoWars Nightly News reporter Dan Badandi is going to break down the TSA's violation of the Administrative Procedure Act. Here's Dan Badandi. Thank you, Darren. Dan Badandi reporting for the Nightly News, and TSA continues to break the law by ignoring court demands on the naked body scanners violating the Administrative Procedure Act. Back in July of 2011, the D.C. Court of Appeals ruled that the TSA had violated federal law by rolling out radiation fire and body scanners in airports without soliciting public comment. The court noted that it would allow the use of these scanners to continue, but the TSA should act promptly to initiate the legally required notice and comment rulemaking procedure. And Judge R. Douglas Ginsburg found that there was no justification for having failed to conduct a notice, comment, uh, rulemaking, and said, few and irregular uh, procedures imposed directly and significantly upon so many members to, of the public. And uh, EPIC, known as the Electronic Privacy Information Center, has previously argued in court that the body scanners are invasive, unlawful, and ineffective and that the TSA deployment of the devices violate the U.S. Constitution and several other federal statutes. The rights group is pursuing a case to completely suspend the use of these airport scanners. And on the note of the airport scanners, the federal government's already spent close to $1 billion on 800 of these machines nationwide, and they have plans for 1,000 more of these machines within the next two years. And in relation to this whole Batman shooting, could we now see TSA at your local movie theaters? And we're going to move on to quotes of the day. And this one is, uh, I think it's a very disturbing quote and a smack in the face to anybody who served our country. And this is from the king of the New World Order, Henry Kissinger. He quotes, military men are just dumb, stupid animals to be used as pawns in foreign policy. Now, again, that is a smack in the face to anybody who served that country. And that's from Henry Kissinger. And we got one more quote from Mr. Kissinger. It is not a matter of what is true that counts, but a matter of what is perceived to be true. 
In other words, what's right is wrong, wrong is right. You know, enemy, truth is the enemy of the state. And that's the propaganda that these people try to push. And folks, uh, this is Dan Bedani for the Nightly News. Thank you, Dan, for that report. Uh, that's going to do it for the first half of our show. We're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, Rob Dew talks with Thelma Tormina. Now, she's the woman who recently pulled a gun on a center point energy worker to stop him from installing a smart meter on her private property. I guess she doesn't like spy devices on her personal property violating her family's privacy. Obviously an extremist. She shares her experience and talks about the entire incident when we return right after this. Christy Hightower here for PlanetInfoWars.com, bringing you your weekly Patriots Are Talking update. Every day I get more and more excited to see how you Planet InfoWars users are utilizing things like events and missions within groups to come together and share knowledge, or reading your articles where you're sharing your research and your, your passions. Um, for example, user Paul wrote an article this past week called uh, Activism, Grassroots Activism, and he provides a short explanation for why and how you can exercise your civil rights. Or even on a different subject matter, if you're looking for how plants can heal you and, and help your health, you should check out Galen's article detailing five great herbs for your skin. Lavender, I think, is among them. And also, lastly, a reminder that we are paying attention to your well-written, well-cited articles. Melissa Melton actually has an article from Planet InfoWars titled, CDC Pushes Measles Vaccine. And we've now featured it on the front page of InfoWars.com. So if you keep great articles coming like that at us, I guarantee you, you'll get there too. So thanks again for all of your hard work and keep the knowledge flowing. Till next time, Patriots. We are back on the InfoWars Nightly News. Today's date is July 20th, 2012, and it is Friday. And I hope you enjoyed hearing from our guest uh, host today, David Ortiz and Dan Bedondi. Both flew in for the second part of the interview process that, you know, you know those guys were finalists in the reporter contest that was huge, overwhelming support for that, lots of people participating. It's too bad everybody couldn't win, but there are a few, only a few slots available. So. We'll have more people in next week and, um, you know, just enjoy it and see what they bring to the table. Everybody's bringing their own life experience to the table. And a big thanks to Darren McBreen for doing the first part of the news. Now, yesterday we covered a story. Woman pulls gun to prevent smart meter installation. And that was Thelma Taramina. She's from Houston. She had this bureaucrat thug jumping over her fence, going to take down her original meter, her uh, electrical meter, and place one of these smart meters up, which we've gone over the litany of problems they have with them. They haven't been tested. They're trying to push these things on you. And so she was forced to defend her property and herself by using her firearm, which is what everybody's right is to do with the Second Amendment. Because we don't know if this bureaucrat's right. Just because he says he's right and because he claims to have this authority, what well, you know, it may not be true. He didn't have a, a court order putting this in. There was nothing. He was just going to jump over her fence and do it. She clearly had the signs posted, and she defended herself rightfully so. So we turn now to Thelma Jeremina. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. So tell us about this story. I was talking with you on the phone today, and you related that you know this incident didn't happen two days ago or three days ago. Why don't you go ahead and tell us the story? No, it didn't. It happened. Uh a year, it'll be a year ago next month. And what happened was he came around to the neighborhood, was placing door hangers on the door, would ring the doorbell, and all of a sudden he'd disappear. He was gone on to the next house. Well, when I got the door hanger, it pretty much said, congratulations on your new smart meter. Um, so I tried to walk down my uh, front yard to catch him, and he was already gone down the street onto the neighbor's um, houses. So, so, so they were when making he came this. Back, he, uh, I'm going to interrupt uh, you just for one second. Driveway, and I was at my back gate, and I went and I met him halfway down the driveway and told him he wasn't going to install the meter. He insisted he was. This went on for three times. And then finally he said, okay, fine, I'll call my supervisor. 
which was the appropriate thing to do. The unfortunate thing is either he didn't call his supervisor or his supervisor gave him very bad instructions. Because what happened is he drove around to the backside of my property, which fronts on another street, and he jumped my fence. I was in the backyard, and I was over standing in front of our meter. And when he came over the fence, he almost kind of was like on a run because he was a real big guy. He came over the fence and just kind of the inertia just kept going. So when he got to me, he literally shoved me out from in front of my meter. And I asked him to please leave my property. And he wouldn't. And I tried to step in front of the meter again to try to stop him. And then I tried to place my hand on the meter so he couldn't do it. And he just kept shoving me and shoving me. And then he took his cell phone out and he was making a phone call. I asked him who he was calling. He said, none of your business. And I said, okay. And then he said, I'm calling the police. I said, good. I would like them here. Um, and then he turned around to me, he closed his phone, and he said to me, better yet, you go call the police, because by the time they get here, I will have this meter on and installed, and there won't be anything you can do. So I thought, okay, I better call the police. So I headed in to call the police. I reached for the phone, and just as I reached for the phone, I thought, this is kind of crazy. There sits my purse. I have a concealed handgun license, so I have my handgun in my purse. So I turned around and walked back out my door to the middle of my backyard. And I just looked at him and I said, well, how about I get my gun? And he said, yeah, right. Like I didn't own one. So I proceeded to go back in the house and I did get my gun. I never pointed it at him. It was already loaded, never took the safety off. And as soon as he saw the gun, he turned around and left the property. Now, this guy was six foot one, 230 pounds. I know that because of the police report. And I'm five foot three and maybe, maybe 120 pounds. Um, so he was twice my size. I mean, this guy was a big guy. And he just was taking no for an answer. And he didn't follow protocol at all. So it wasn't like, I'm not suggesting that people, if they see somebody come to install a meter on their property, they shouldn't go out there with a handgun telling them to get off the property. But by the same token, they do have the right to refuse these meters. Although the Texas PUC is trying to tell us we don't have that right. But the bill, which is HB 2129, which was passed in the 79th legislature, it actually encouraged the deployment of the smart meters, but it also included a consumer option. And they didn't follow that rule. And they also had in there that the, they were only supposed to deploy one third of the total meters each year. In other words, this mass full deployment all done over this short period of time was never meant to take place. There are letters into the PUC from the author of the bill stating that there was never a mandate and he's very concerned that his constituents are being forced to take and pay for these smart meters. But yet and all, we have um, petitioned the PUC twice in order to get a public hearing, you have to either have 25 or more people in the state ask for a public hearing, a government body or agency ask for a public hearing, or an association with 20, over 25 members ask for, for a public hearing. Well, we have 193 petitioners asking for a public hearing. We also have our association, which is a legitimate um, non, not for profit uh, organization, and we are an association, and we have asked for the public hearing. 
They have turned us down twice and will not allow us to have a public hearing on this. Well, of course, that's why they shove this technology down our throats, because yeah. they know if we actually got to look at the technology or if there are actual real studies about its effects, we would say no. It's like GMO foods. They have to keep shoving that down our throats and they don't let us even debate it. It's all you're crazy if you don't want to eat this. We've had scientists working on it for years. And, and this goes back, you know, you, you said they put a, a sign on your door that said, congratulations on your new smart meter, like yes. you've won something amazing. And then you have signs posted on your fence, posted next to your meter that you don't want this thing. Clearly, no trespassing. You got this thug jumping over your fence and then trying to just manhandle you out of your way. He pushed you seven times. Seven times. Yeah, seven times pushes you out of the way. The news comes out and kind of does a whitewash story on it, trying to make you look like an aggressor, in, in my opinion. That's what they were trying to make you do, make you look like you were the bad person for pulling out your gun, protecting yourself. Because they don't want people out there protecting themselves with firearms. They want everybody cowering, calling the police whenever anything happens. The police are going to show up. You know who they're going to side with? They're going to side with the power company. Yeah, I've heard that that has happened. We're finding more and more, though, that we're trying to contact the police departments because really this is civil law. This isn't criminal law. And as long as no one is vandalizing the meters and nobody is destroying any of the uh, transmission and distribution companies' property, such as the lines and the meters and all of that, then no criminal charges can be brought, nor is anybody doing criminal activity. These um, companies in the state of Texas, and I'm sure in other parts of the country, I know in Texas they are using bullying tactics, they are lying to people, they are threatening people with turning off the power. They really are using heavy-handed tactics to get this full deployment out because center point energy has to meet a deadline in order to get the funds from the stimulus plan that Obama put in action when he first took office. That's what this is all about, is those stimulus monies. Well, and also what it's about is energy control. They want to use these meters to cut off your power, to track how much power you're using out of which appliances. They can even tell uh, what TV channel you're watching at a certain time just by reading the different uh, uh, signal signatures that run right. through there. So this is dangerous technology that we know we've seen the government do it before. They don't, they don't use their power in a, a noble and just manner. It's always cramming stuff down your throat and regulating it to death. Right. And if people only realized over in Europe, there's already countries that have banned these meters and they're, they are the same meters that they are um, putting in here in America, at least in Texas. And um, to my understanding, the uh, people in London actually have billing plans where they go without power a certain hours of the day, and they have it at night, also that they're not using power during peak hours. And these are the same type of billing plans that are coming out from our um, providers here in Texas. Yeah. They want us to go without power. And these things have kill switches. So if one portion of the state needs more power than another, they can flip that switch so that more power is going one place than another. They'll tell us that they're not looking at a national grid, but they are. Mm -hmm. And why Texas would do that, I don't know, because right now we're the only state that can stand alone with our electricity. Now, we may have to buy more because the EPA has been just so wonderful to make sure that no more plants can go up. But we still stand alone on our grid. If something brings the national grid down, it won't bring Texas's grid down unless they go after our grid also. And that's the plan, is to nationalize everything. Yeah. We, we've been covering that since we started the nightly news, Obama's power grab. And he said, if you want to run a coal power plant, we're going to bankrupt you. He just came out yeah. and said it. And that's what he wants to do. Absolutely. And, you know, he, he wants to claim it's all dirty energy, yet oh, nuclear is somehow safe. Even though, you know, we've seen what happens in Fukushima, nuclear is not safe. Sorry. It, it, you know, it, there's, there's too Look, many things out there. We do need cheap power, and cheap power is what built this country. Yeah. The, the thing of it is, is as long as you're living, nothing is safe. There's nothing guaranteed. Exactly. But, but the thing that is in our country supposed to be guaranteed is our liberties, our freedom, 
and our right to pursue happiness. And that isn't happening in this country anymore. And I don't know about other people out there, but I'm not giving up my freedoms that easily. Not for the convenience of a smart meter that really does not save money. And there are serious health risks. We have three experts that will come into Texas and testify if we could get the public hearing. Right. And let's go over some of those risks because there it's a litany. Of them. I know they cause headaches. They're putting out a weird magnetic field. Um, it's like having a, um, uh, what is it? They have the, you have those wireless routers, but this is like that times, you know, 10, the amount of signal that they're pushing out there. So what have you learned in your studies? Well, what, what I've learned today is that you're absolutely right. It, a lot of people are um, all of a sudden having headaches where they never had headaches before. People are having joint aches. People are having ten tendonitis. Um, they're also, it's interfering with pacemakers. These uh, frequencies are actually, just last week, there was a man who his pacemaker actually failed because of one of these meters. It's neurologically, it, it affects children with neurological issues. The studies that have been done show that these actually, all of these um, wavelengths are affecting the DNA in vegetation and wildlife. So all the claims that this will help the environment is not true. It's going to hurt us. On top of that, and people will think this is nuts, but I'm throwing it in there. They're actually studying the effects of artificial light on the environment. Why would they do that? They would do that so that they can mark territories where there can be no artificial light, which means at night you can't have lights there, which means people will not live there. Hmm. I'm not lying. This is the truth. You can go out and look on the Internet. It's all there. Wow, that is amazing. I didn't even know that. Uh, and yes. You know, the smart meters isn't something I know a ton about, but I, I have done my reading on it. And I had never heard that, the studies on areas with no artificial light. That is, <laughs> that it reeks of Agenda 21. Yeah. If, you yeah. know, uh, no human development, we're going to rewild these areas. We covered an article earlier this week about Chernobyl. These writers are going in there saying, oh, it's amazing. The nature has come back and taken over. And it's a wildlife preserve, and the animals don't know about the radiation, so they're just living in it and making it seem like it's a wonderful thing that we have areas that nobody wants to go live in because they're radioactive. And, you yeah. know, that's how, you know, they want to sell and get us, get us on this power. Now, I want to go to a little bit of a Second Amendment stuff. I, I guess if you've probably heard about the Batman shooting at the theater. Yeah, yeah. And this is, this is a situation where somebody carrying a handgun could have ended that quickly. And it happens all the time, people defending themselves when they're in these situations and they have handguns and, and, you know, when somebody comes up and starts shooting people, there's only one thing to do at that point. And it's not, um, it's not run in fear because you'll probably end up getting shot, you know, it's opening back up on the guy. But that's my yeah. opinion. How do you feel about the recent well, news? He, um, the, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart that our society has gotten to the point where the morals in the majority of this country is all, everybody focuses on the material things. Success is the amount of money you make, not the um, satisfaction you get from doing and performing your job or inventing or building a business. It's no longer that is no longer judged successful. It's all the money. It's the material stuff. That's one portion of it. But when it comes to the Second Amendment rights, my what I really get more upset about is that the citizens in this country do not understand that the Founding Fathers didn't give us that right to, keep, to bear arms simply to protect ourselves against criminals like this young man and what he did. That's not the only reason why they gave us the, that right. The biggest right we have and responsibility with the right to bear arms is to keep watch so we do not come up against a tyrannical government. And people seem to forget that or don't want to know that. It, you're exactly right. It is a checkmate for the citizens to use against the government. It allows us to say, hey, you know, there's only so far you can push us 
we're reasonable people, but when you keep pushing and keep pushing, guess what? We have millions of guns and we're buying millions more. And that's what scares them. So that's why they're trying stuff. We, we played video of Eric Holder saying we got to brainwash the people into thinking guns are bad. You know, we know Obama wants to sign this UN, UN treaty. He can't wait. The UN, the front of their building, they have a giant gun tied in a, in a knot. Well, We know is, what, the, what they're up to. Yeah, and the truth of the matter is something I didn't know, and I just learned this weeks ago, and I still have to dig into it more. But there was actually the um, a... a bill, apparently, that was entered and passed in Kennedy's time, and probably because of the Cuban Missile Crisis. They wanted to get all of the weapons out of the hands of the various countries. Ultimately, what they want to do is put all of the arms in the control of the United Nations so that people and uh, governments wouldn't war with one another. Well, our society isn't built like that. We know you take guns away from the average citizen and those that are in power will abuse the power and you cannot fight bullets with stones and clubs and rocks and things like that nature. Look at what's going on over in Europe and in Greece and all that. They fight with those weapons because they have no other. And look at Syria. Look at those people being killed. Why are they being killed? because they don't have the right to bear arms, because they are not free. The solution in this world to stop the madness and all the poverty and all the uh, differences in what the people who would like to control us, the, the answer to the problems in this country is, or, or in this world are giving people freedom, because that is the only way man will ever be happy is to have freedom and live in a civil society. I couldn't have said it better than that. Thelma, Taramina, beautiful lady with a handgun, taking care of her property, taking care of her household. We salute you here at the InfoWars Nightly News. Thanks for coming on and uh, hope to talk to you again under better circumstances. Give a quick plug to your website. Uh, we had it up under your name, uh, 912membersusa.com. Tell us a little bit about yes. it. Well, um, our organization is We the People or the 912 Association. The 912 stands for the day, the people we were the day after 9-11. Americans who didn't care what party we belonged to, what religion we were, what race or creed we were, whether we were male or female. We all took care of one another. We all looked out for one another. We all felt the pain of New York City, Pennsylvania, and Washington. We all felt that pain. And that's what we need to get back to. We have to take care of each other. We focus on educational um, issues, historical education, along with um, current issues that are happening that affects our rights. And that's what we do. And this is one of the biggest ones, the smart meters. We must stop them. I agree. Totally agree. Thanks for coming on the show. And we will talk to you again soon. Thank you very much. Have a good one. All right. That's our show today. A lot of great people coming in. Darren McBreen, David Ortiz, Dan Badandi. Everybody's doing a good job. We're going to have some more guest uh, hosts next week coming in. We're flying people in, letting them sit in the hot seat and see how they do. If you're uh, watching this on YouTube, please consider being a member of Prison Planet TV. It's, uh, we have a 15-day free trial. It's not very expensive after that, about 6 bucks a month. And you have access to this every night. you got all, access to all of Alex's films and books. Also, uh, if you're a member of Prison Planet TV and you want to do more, become a member of uh, Planet InfoWars. That's our big social network, and it is filling up fast. People are joining. People are getting together because that's what it's all about. We have to take care of each other, and we can't expect Obama, even though he builds everything and takes care of us and feeds us and, and brings the water to our houses, even though he does all that, he still ain't going to take care of us in a crisis. We all, we've seen what happens in a crisis. And these guys turn their back on us like you wouldn't believe it. So with that, that's our news. We'll see you next weekend. And uh, I guess we're going to be showing a Dave Mustaine interview probably Monday. He's going to be here sitting with Alex at this very table uh, later today. So with that, everybody have a good night and stay free.